So let's talk about, for example, the force of gravity that exists between the Earth and the Moon. So in this example, we have the force of gravity between the Earth and the Moon. So uh, the force of gravity then is going to be equal to big G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Moon divided by R squared. Now. R in this equation, Danaher, is specifically what? The distance between the center and the mass of the moon. The, the center of what? The Earth and the Moon. The Earth and the Moon. Notice how this is not the radius of the Earth. This is not the radius of the Moon. This is the distance between the center of mass of the Earth and the center of mass of the Moon. OK. We need all these numbers. Big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Times the mass of the moon, which I believe is 7.4 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. I'll look that up in just a moment. And the distance between the Earth and the moon, which is 3.8 times 10 to the 8th meters. And we're going to square that. So let me just check real quick. I believe it is 7.4. So. Yep. Uh, so if you didn't believe me before that you need to find the times 10 to the whatever button on your calculator, please believe me now. Please plug this in. Let's see what we get. So with sig figs, 2.0 times 10 to the 20th newtons. So notice, again, this is the force that the Earth is applying on the moon and the force that the moon is applying on the Earth. So the moon right now is being pulled toward the Earth with a force of 2 times 10 to the 20th newtons. And right now, the Earth is being pulled toward the moon with a force of 2 times 10 to the 20th newtons. That's the force of gravity that exists between the Earth and the moon. Okay. So now, if we figured out the force that the Earth exerts on the moon, we can actually figure out the acceleration of the moon. The way we'll do that is we'll sum the forces on the moon. That's going to be equal to the force of gravity we just figured out, which is equal to the mass of the moon multiplied by the acceleration of the moon. Newton's second law, sum of the force equals mass times acceleration. The force of gravity, uh, so actually we'll figure out the acceleration of the moon. So the acceleration of the moon is going to be equal to the force of gravity divided by the mass of the moon. So the force of gravity is 2.04405 times 10 to the 20th, divided by the mass of the moon, which was 7.4 times 10 to the 22nd. The acceleration of the moon, please. So with sig figs, two sig figs, 0 0.0028 meters per second squared. We just figured out the acceleration of the moon toward the Earth. That acceleration equals a number, which means, Sandra, what set of equations can we use? UAM, we now figured out the acceleration of the moon toward the Earth. We know the distance between the Earth and the moon, 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. We also know, we can approximate that the moon started at rest relative to the Earth. Therefore, we can use UAM to figure out how long it is before the moon is going to strike the Earth and we have the extinction of the entire human race. It's as simple as a UAM equation. Right? There it is. The acceleration equals a number. We have the distance. We have the acceleration. We have the initial velocity. It's a simple UAM equation. We can figure it out. There is something wrong with this logic. It's important to understand where the error is. Rick. Well, the acceleration isn't constant because the 
the closer it gets to your the more. Oh, I, actually, you know what? You're right. It does become a calculus issue because as it gets closer, the acceleration is going to increase. You're right. We can't quite solve it with this with this class. We could do it in terms of energy if you would prefer, uh, but we don't have universal gravitational potential energy either. So I guess I'll have to do it for you. It actually ends up being about half of what we would get with the UAM. So it's unfortunate. It's we're all going to die faster. Thank you. <laughs> or sooner, not faster. Sooner. I'm sorry, there's still something wrong with the logic. Goolsby. Um, like, because they all the other planets, they all uh, I do agree with that, but I think you would agree that the Earth and the Moon are so close that this is actually the largest force acting on the Moon, is the force to the Earth. It's unfortunate. Let's, again, we're still all going to die, according to the what we have on the board. Jack? The Moon rotates around the Earth. Ah, so? So, because it's the... Uh, it's not going towards us, it's going, like, you take it a moment, it's going that way, but it keeps going around, so. <laughs> this is not an object that's at rest. This is an object in motion, and it's inertia tries to keep it going in a straight line, right? Mm -hmm. So this object is moving in a circle. I did a very good job of masking it, but class, anytime this, you sum the forces, you must first identify Let's try that again. That didn't work. <laughs> Class, whenever you sum the forces, you must first identify what? Direction. Class, in what direction did we sum the forces in? <laughs> really? Come on, people. In what direction did we sum the forces in? In the in direction. Notice, this is in the in direction. That makes this acceleration on the moon actually the centripetal acceleration of the moon. Here we have the Earth. The Earth is right here in our picture. We then have the moon. The moon is moving in a circle. Notice that the force of gravity is the centripetal force. If we sum the forces in the indirection, the only force is the force of gravity. Therefore, this force of gravity is what's causing this object to move in a circle. This is centripetal acceleration. This acceleration of the moon keeps it moving in a circle rather than moving in a straight line. It, this, the moon wants to move in the direction of the tangential velocity, but the centripetal acceleration keeps it moving toward the Earth in a circular motion. So, fortunately, we are not all going to die this way. Five billion years from now, what happens? Sun. Dang. The sun's going to envelop the Earth. Hopefully, we'll leave the planet before then. 